It's a miracle that he just that he survived the accident. You hear all the stories about what it was like to work for Junior. What was it like to live with Junior? Well, you know, um, we're here at the Winston Cup Museum with Culver Seagraves, who is the man to lead us through this place. Why don't you give a little bit of background as to who your dad was and why people may remember him. My dad was Ralph C. Graves. He's the gentleman that uh, got NASCAR and Winston married back in 1971. The sponsorship with R.J. Reynolds basically came about. The federal government in 1969 had um, banned television advertising for the and radio advertising for the uh, cigarette companies. And so they had $70 million to spend. They brought in their five top division managers from around the country, and one of those was my father. He was approached by Junior Johnson to sponsor his race team. Junior, you know, came in and uh, told him that he needed $150,000 a year to sponsor his team. And my dad said, well, got 70 million, what else have you got? Junior told him, he said, well, you need to talk to Bill France Sr. Dad and Bill France Sr., they, uh, they cut a deal and um, basically uh, R.J. Reynolds sponsored the point fund, which became the Winston Cup. That's a fascinating backstory that a lot of people probably don't know about now they do this is the first thing you have in here you can see it from the road what is this car well that is a 1969 Dodge Daytona built by Teddy Enterprises for Dave Marcus uh, when Dave um, when NASCAR outlawed that car Dave sold it to goodies it became uh, the goodies uh, um, show car they painted it petty blue because Richard was their spokesperson and they used it until they got out of racing <clears throat> then Will bought it. Winston had to get out of uh, racing in 2003. Uh, Will and JKS um, painted the car up and in the Winston colors and they took it to Homestead for the last race and Richard Petty the King uh, drove it, uh, they called it the final lap. Uh, he drove it and then Jack Roush drove uh, Matt Kenseth's car around the track for one lap uh, after afterwards. So you had your first Winston Cup champion and your last Winston Cup champion. So is that an authentic Petty Enterprises Hemi? Uh, no, it's not a Petty Enterprises Hemi, but the car is a Petty Enterprises car. We have not been in here yet, so we have no idea yeah. what we're expecting. Oh, you got my favorite paint scheme back there. Which wow. one's that? The, uh, the spiky Kevin Harvick car. Oh, okay. Yeah. The mural goes all the way around the building and it starts in 1971 and ends in 2003. And it's got the uh, highlighted pictures uh, that tell the story of uh, Winston's involvement with the 33 year history. I was at this race. I remember that when they ran those cars. Uh -huh. I was uh, seven, I think. Oh really? Yeah, that's the only part of that I remember. That, Richard Childress driving Dale Earnhardt's car and playing with trucks in the mud because it rained that weekend. Toy trucks in the mud, yep. Funny, the things you remember when you're little. That car right there, uh, Bobby Allison driving for Junior Johnson in 1972. Um, I was uh, working in Junior's pit crew, I was 15 years old. Still have the Coca-Cola pants and I can still wear them. Are you in this picture? Uh, no, I'm not in that picture, but that's uh, Francis Allen who was uh, our parts guy, Herb Nab, who's our crew chief, Turkey Minton, and that's Fred Johnson, Junior Johnson's uh, brother doing the jacking. I've never heard of Junior Johnson's brother before. Yeah, Fred, uh, they actually said Fred was a better driver than Junior, and even Junior said so. Why didn't he drive? Uh, I don't know, uh, but uh, Junior always said Fred was a better driver than him. Huh. Are a lot of these pictures pulled from like the the Winston archives? All these pictures were uh, from the Winston archives. R.J. Reynolds had a photographer, his name was Dozier Mobley. Um, he was a professional photographer. He went to all the races and uh, did all the photographs for R.J. Reynolds. These are pictures I don't recall ever seeing before and they're really high quality. What's this car? Uh, that's one of the Winston show cars. Um, Hollywood uh, was a gentleman named Mark Rogers that worked uh, at R.J. Reynolds Sports Marketing and uh, he died of cancer and uh, he was just one of uh, one of everybody's favorite people and so um, Will uh, put this car in the museum as a tribute to him. What's the backstory on this Wendell Scott car? Well, probably the best race car Wendell Scott ever had. Racing in the uh, 1973 day, uh, Winston 500, he was in a crash I think on lap 13 
and uh, he was in the hospital. In fact, it's a miracle that he just that he survived the accident. But uh, he had his life savings in this race car, and it basically ruined him financially, and uh, and basically ended his racing career. Um, the car was. Uh, sold by the Scott family to a gentleman down in Georgia. He contacted Will and uh, Will went down, bought it and Wendell's ramp truck. Uh, we're in the process of getting the ramp truck running. Uh, we're gonna leave it <clears throat> patina and everything like it is, but we wanna get it running so we can take it around and show it. But we talk, talked about maybe redoing this car, but then we decided it was a better uh, display leaving it like it was. Oh yeah. Where did it sit outside for so long? To Up get... in uh, Danville at uh, Wendell's uh, shop. Oh, so this is just like in the woods or something behind <clears throat> his place yeah. and mm -hmm. that, wow. <laughs> it's a Holman Moody, I don't, know if, I don't know if it's a Holman Moody car, but it's got a Holman Moody switch plate on it. Odds are it was, I mean, this is the right era for it to be a Holman Moody car, isn't it? I think it was. So freaking cool. Some of the uh, funny money that uh, RJ Reynolds uh, threw out <laughs> to the fans. And then this car, the last car that Kyle Petty won a race in, uh, Kyle was here for a book signing and uh, I asked him to autograph the car. Whenever we get drivers in here, we get them to autograph their pictures on the mural and, and autograph their cars. And uh, he told me, he said, funny story, it's the last car I ever won in. Prior to that, did he not know where that car went? It probably didn't have a clue. Is this the car that he won all those races at Rockingham with? That, uh, got that I don't know. I just know it was the last car that he won uh, won a race in. Number ten. How about this one? That's a Bill Elliott car. It looks like it was raced. Yeah, it was definitely raced. Like it was raced and then partially cleaned up like they were, they yeah. rubbed the rubber just off the numbers. That's pretty funny. It looks like it was part of the graphic. Are all these cars owned by the museum or yes, something? Uh, every, on everything that's in here is owned by the museum. We have had some that are on loan. These are all property of the museum. And what's really kind of cool, you can look at this show car here. This is basically, this car was more of a stock car. When you look at it, it's got the glass windshield, um, you know, and then we're, these are all Lexan, the primitive, how primitive it was on the, uh, the interior and stuff compared to the, to the new cars. I know that has a whole new really switch. Yeah. What was the origin of this show car because i know that some of the winston show cars came from other teams most of the winston show cars i think the fords came from uh came from the wood brothers petty enterprises did, did the chryslers and junior johnson did the chevrolets that makes sense mm -hmm. the ones i have seen were chevys and they were junior yeah. johnson cars yeah I think it's neat, you can see the factory bumper covers, how they just kind of made a panel to cover up the tail lights and riveted yeah. it on there. And you know, from 10 feet, you can't tell, but up here, you can. Shell. And then I got Bobby to autograph his car when he was here. 
Is there any significance to this car? No, not that I know of. It's just one of the cars that he raced. Huh. Now the Earnhardt car, uh, we took it to uh, Goodwood in 2019. It's still got the Goodwood sticker on the uh, on the windshield. How was this car acquired? Um, bought it from Richard Childers, and uh, that is a two Earnhardt seat. And uh, Kurt Shelverdine uh, uh, was telling me that uh, they had a certain number of seats that uh, Dale really liked. The Smoking Joe's car is the last car that Junior Johnson built in uh, Ingle Hollow. We had a, um, an agreement with Junior when we first started uh, Smoking Joe's in, uh, uh, with Travis Carter uh, to build our race cars and our engines. And uh, that was Super Speedway car. The No Bull car. Uh, that car was uh, when the government decided that Smokin' Joe's no longer could be on a car. We switched to uh, Winston. I was Jimmy Spencer's team manager working for Travis Carter. Um, that particular paint scheme was never used but one time and that was the car ran at the last race of the 1997 season at Atlanta and uh, Will Spencer that owns the museum came up to me and said that if Jimmy doesn't wad this car up during the race, I want to buy it. And when the race was over, he bought that car from us. And that's basically the way it set uh, when, it, uh, when it came off the racetrack after the Atlanta race. I just noticed the, the bead rolled Thunderbird logo in the package tray back here is a really cool detail. It's a little extra effort makes these things what they are. What was this cutaway car from? The cutaway car was from ES, was used by ESPN uh, uh, when they, during the races, uh, they'd have a crew chief like Tim Brewer, or Jeff Hamlin, or whatever, and they would explain uh, what was going on during the race to give the fans uh, kind of a bird's eye view of what made the race cars kind of tick. Think engine will start in any gear. Whoever made these labels was very confident. Yeah. I think it'll start. I don't know though. This one thing looks like it's seen some race use. the significance of all the motorcycles? Uh, the motorcycles were owned by Zach Reynolds, who was the grandson of R.J. Reynolds, R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company. Uh, Zach was a motorcycle enthusiast and a um, racing enthusiast. He built uh, the race bikes and raced them. Will Spencer, that owns a museum, grew up around uh, Zach. Zach was killed in a plane crash. So when Will got successful, he started buying back the bikes and refurbishing them. So being R.J. Reynolds, such a big part of Winston-Salem and this, we, uh, we brought some of the bikes in here. A lot of people like seeing them and stuff, and we're getting ready to move them down to our shop and welcome and uh, put two or three more race cars in here. And all that uh, paraphernalia there is all my dad's stuff. Was your dad uh, into racing prior to any of these sponsorships? Or yeah, he... um, my dad drove the pace car at Old Dominion Speedway in Manassas, Virginia when I was a youngster. He uh, raced at Bowman Gray Stadium a couple of times uh, before they moved to uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, Al Gore owned Old Dominion uh, 
um, from 1952 till they shut it down in 2012. So he's not related to the politician Al Gore? No, no, no. Okay, no, I was gonna say like, the, not, who not owned even, that? Not, not even close. Not yeah, even close. that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. That makes in fact, no sense. the guardrail that's out in the uh, in the front lobby came from, uh, part of it came from uh, Old Dominion and it's painted in the Winston red colors huh. that R.J. Reynolds supplied. Marty Robbins shine in my dad's shoes. Marty had given my dad a pair of uh, crocodile loafers and uh, they, they did that for a little photo op. So how old were you when this stuff was happening? And Well, I started in 1972, I was 15. And uh, basically uh, from the time I was 15 till I uh, went to college, uh, I'd spend my summers at Junior Johnson's uh, working until it was time to come home and uh, get ready to play high school football and um, worked on the race team, uh, on the pit crew, and uh, I was really good free help. And uh, Did you stay at Juniors? Yeah, I'd stay with, uh, junior, I'd stay with Junior and Flossie. Oh, well, that must have yeah. been an experience. Oh, it was. Uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, you, they were like my adopted parents. In fact, uh, Flossie, um, up until uh, the day she died, uh, I took her to uh, all the... Dad, was, Dad and T. Wayne were on the uh, Hall of Fame ballot, and then uh, they were removed, and then Dad was on the landmark ballot. He won the landmark award in 2021. And um, so uh, I would take Flossie to, and my, my dad's sister, she's 98. I would take those two ladies to the Hall of Fame voting day and to the uh, Hall of Fame induction ceremonies every year. And uh, they had a, had a really good time because Flossie had nine drivers in the Hall of Fame, her and Junior. Wow. Yeah. You got to witness a lot of stuff that people like never see, like living with, well, you hear all the stories about what it was like to work for Junior. What was it like to live with Junior? Well, you know, um, Junior's one of the, one of the smartest men that I ever met. We were in uh, <clears throat> Detroit visiting General Motors and uh, they were testing some Cosworth engines and uh, we were there, they were running them on the dyno and, uh, Junior cocked his head and he looked at the engineer and he said, that motor's getting ready to blow up. And the engineer looked at him and said, there's no way. All the gauges, it's running perfectly. Everything's great. And he hadn't gotten that out of his mouth before the motor hand grenaded all over the, the room. <laughs> and uh, the guy looked at Junior and he said, how in the world did you know that was going to happen? And Junior just looked at him and said, it didn't sound right to me. <laughs> and he could tell. Junior... Um, could tell his race car from other race cars on the track by the sound because uh, he had a unique set of headers that only he ran and nobody else did and uh, um, that's one of the reasons he went from Chevrolet to Ford uh, because uh, he'd sent a set of heads up to Chevrolet and I can't remember if they went to Hendrix or they went to Childress's and, uh, and they weren't supposed to and uh, when Junior found out about it he uh, called Edsel Ford and switched from Chevrolet to Ford. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I know when you watch those old broadcasts, you can hear his cars out of the pack from yeah. any of them. Like, they're, you know, they got the angry he, uh, bee sound. J Junior was, uh, he was an extremely innovative person. And his philosophy was, it's not cheating until you get caught. Um, in 1972, um, they confiscated our uh, gas tank. Said so we had a large gas tank. And uh, Junior told him it wasn't a large gas tank and they basically made him extremely mad. And so he got in the car while the inspector was holding the gas tank, cranked the car up and drove it out of the racetrack onto the trailer and took it back to Wilkesboro. Gas tank wasn't big, but there was fuel lines run through the roll bars. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, he said, I told you there wasn't nothing wrong with my gas tank. And, uh, but a uh, lot, lot of neat things like that. And that's, to me, I think that that's where um, with the rules and everything, I know everything has to change, but they've kind of, to me, in today's racing, they've kind of handicapped the crew chiefs and, uh, and, and people. They, they don't have a lot of leeway to do things anymore like they did back in the day. Um, just like, uh, you know, they used to didn't have a post-race inspection. If you made it through pre-race, you were golden. And, uh, you know, that's when they would uh, um, hide... Uh, lead shot in the uh, in the roll cage or uh, you know one of the things we did was we have a co ice cooler full of lead and when first pit stop we'd change that cooler out and put a 
cooler with water in and uh, and take that lead out and you'd probably have 50, 75 pounds lighter than it. <laughs> yeah. So anything to get a competitive edge. Do you ever uh, witness any f funny stuff like that that never got caught other than like the the cooler? Again. Oh, there were there were there were a lot of things that that were done. I mean, you know, and and uh, they would hide uh, lead shot in the uh, in the car in the in the roll cage, and so um, they have a trap door. And when the car was making its uh, warm up laps before the race started with the pace car, they'd pull uh, the wire and it would open the trap door, and the lead shot would fall out of the car and the, all the tracks were banked and the lead shot would roll to the bottom of the track and uh, you know <laughs> uh, your car would be maybe a hundred pounds lighter or whatever and uh, you know uh, we weren't the only ones that were doing it back then it was, it was kind of common I believe. President Carter with Bobby, Donnie Allison and my mom and dad. The first super team uh, DW and Neil Bonnet. My dad with Junior's dog Red Dog. Uh, Carcraft Magazine All-Star, my dad uh, won that. Uh, Marty Robbins and uh, Don Winters. Uh, Wes B. Roth, my dad T. Wayne and Dan Henley. <clears throat> dad and Marty, that's Talladega Super Speedway in the background. Larry Carrier that built Bristol Dragway and the Bristol Motor Speedway. Humpy Wheeler and uh, Bruton Smith. Bobby Ray Hall. Uh, my mom and dad and his tea bucket. That's a motor that came from Richard Childress's. Uh, Bill, uh, Bill Jr. and uh, my dad and Paul Cameron from, uh, uh, there's dad with um, Charlie Pride at the Vantage Championship when they sponsored Vantage Golf. Bobby and dad. Dad with uh, Jeff Bird and Brian Tracy from NHRA. These pictures are awesome. Yeah, Dad and Tim Richmond. Dad and Dale Inman. That was it. Uh, I believe that was Rockingham. Dad with uh, the King and uh, Governor Holshouser when he was governor of North Carolina. Uh, they used to R.J. Reynolds used to give the crew chief that uh, sat on the pole a toolbox. Dad and Junior at a still. <laughs> they named a road after my dad in Watkins Glen. Uh, that's Jerry Clara. That was at the Winston Racing Series banquet. That's uh, Marty Robbins' son, Ronnie Robbins. That's when my dad went into the uh, International Drag Racing Hall of Fame. Uh, Dale Sr. and Teresa with my mom and dad. That's when he won the 87 championship. Uh, Steve Neal, who was a congressman, Rosalind Carter, Flossie Johnson, and my dad at the White House, Junior and Flossie, my mom and dad, and Jerry, uh, Mary Ann Long, chairman of R.J. Reynolds, dad with Larry Carrier again. It was one of my favorite pictures of Pop. And between NASCAR and drag racing, when did you, was your dad ever home, or is he Not on very the road often. all the time? He, uh, he would be home uh, Mondays and Tuesdays, and sometimes Wednesdays and the rest of the time he was on the road. He, I think he saw that's dad with Henry Fonda. Uh, I think dad saw me play high school football maybe once or twice. Uh, Mark Donahue. Uh, another picture with uh, Richmond when he won the Winston Western 500. Victory Lane at North Wilkesboro with uh, Junior. Wally Parks, the founder of uh, NHRA, dad presenting him something. Dad with the King. How about that mustache? <laughs> Jeff Bodine. So Robert G. Carr. Yeah. Bill Elliott. Richard Childers. I mean, all those all those old pictures you see on the internet have been like butchered in quality so many times. You, yeah. This is like this looks like it was taken yesterday. Yeah. Dozier was a great photographer. My mom and dad at the Waldorf. With his camera like the size of a suitcase back then. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and he had like four or five different cameras, lenses, and the whole nine yards. Donnie, Bobby, Bo Bill Hobbs with R.J. Reynolds, Neil Bonnet, my dad, my mom and dad at the first banquet at the Waldorf. <clears throat> A.J., uh, Michael Haynes, the Winchester man, and my pop, Charlie Tucker. 
David Pearson. When you were younger at the track or something, who were the guys that you hoped you bumped into in the garage and got to talk to? I was very blessed. I, I really didn't realize how, you know, people would have probably given their eye teeth to get to do what I did. Um, back in 1974, I was playing high school football and broke my wrist and I had a cast and uh, my cast was autographed by A.J. Foyt, Richard Petty, Johnny Rutherford, um, <laughs> uh, Mark Donahue, uh, uh, David Pearson. I mean, you know, all the guys that uh, were running IndyCar would come and run uh, races with us. There's dad with uh, Richard Nixon. And, um, you know, uh, it, it, I just hung out with them. I mean, you know, it, it was really, uh, really cool, especially, you know, I, I was a 15 year old punk kid and, you know, they treated me like I was somebody. And, uh, that, you know, that was one of the neat things. It, it, everybody was so accessible back then. It's not like it is today. Uh, I can remember I was sitting at the, uh, at the uh, induction ceremony down at the Motor International Motorsports Hall of Fame with uh, Eddie and Lynn Wood and Grant Lynch, who was uh, chairman of the Talladega Super Speedway. And we were talking about how back in the day, you'd be running Martinsville, the race would be over, and the Woods couldn't load their trailer, Petty's couldn't load their trailer, and we couldn't load our trailer because Bobby was sitting on the back of our trailer signing autographs, the King was sitting on the back of his, and Pearson was sitting on the back of his, and they would sit there until every fan that wanted an autograph got an autograph. And, you know, it's not like that today. And, and I asked Junior one time, um, uh, you know, we were at dinner and people would come up and interrupt his dinner. And I asked him, I said, does it ever bother you when somebody comes in and, and interrupts your dinner and asks for an autograph? And he looks at me and he said, no, Colbert. He said, it'd bother me if they didn't, because he got it. He knew that the fans are what paid the bills. And, you know, I still see Bobby Allison all the time. And I go to Mooresville and have lunch with him. And, um, you know, Bob Bobby will always be my hero and he'll always be my favorite race car driver. And, uh, um, but, uh, We'll be at uh, Corinne's in Mooresville, and uh, people will come up and interrupt his lunch, get his autograph and the whole nine yards, and he just sits there and smiles at him, and just he's just as gracious as he can be. And I've never seen I've never seen those guys ever turn down an autograph. When did that and, start to go away? Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, you know, Jimmy Spencer was that way. Uh, Kyle Petty, I've never seen Kyle turn anybody down for an autograph. And, uh, you know, uh, I think a lot of the, as things progressed, more money came into the sport, you know, um, instead of, uh, um, I, I think that's one of the reasons the grandstands aren't as full today as they used to be because, you know, um, uh, it's, it's changed so much. And, you know, sometimes change is good, sometimes change isn't for the better. And, and you know, I think that a lot of times, um, you know, they, they've gotten away from what made NASCAR what NASCAR is. And they're trying to get a different demographic. They're trying to expand, which I understand, because you have to grow or you die. But, uh, you know, you can't alienate uh, your fan base that brought you where you are. And, uh, you know, um, you have to come up with some kind of happy medium. All those little interactions add up. Yeah, I think so how many times people were just instantly hooked with Richard Petty or Bobby Ellison sure. sat there for two hours to give them an autograph and yeah. wasn't mean. Yeah. How many thousands of times did they do that over 10, 15 years? How, oh. how many stories were told by people who went home and said, oh, these guys are super cool. Yeah. What was the exponential effect of all of that? Probably millions of people. Yeah. And absolutely. it put butts in the grandstands. Well, yeah, absolutely. And then you look at the things like uh, when you, uh, the things that R.J. Reynolds did at the races, um, you know, the uh, uh, the Winston Pavilion, uh, you know, you if you were 21 years old, you could go in, they showed movies, they, they had the sample program where, you know, you could trade a uh, pack of Marlboros for a carton of Winston's. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it... Uh, um, that was one of the things people don't realize, you know, R.J. Reynolds' philosophy and my father's philosophy was, you know, we don't encourage anybody to smoke, but if you do smoke, we encourage you to smoke our products. And, uh, you know, um, a lot of people, my mother and father both smoked, 
T. Wayne Robertson that took my dad's place, he didn't smoke. I've never smoked. And so, I mean, you know, it, it wasn't a prerequisite that you had to smoke to work in uh, sports marketing. That's an interesting question. Yeah. I didn't even think to ask. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's just like, you never know. That's why we ask questions to see where sure. it goes. Like, yeah, just... absolutely. Well, that's like I was telling you that caricature. They did that for my dad when he retired. And that, was, uh, that was pretty cool because he always had those questions. And one of the things he uh, taught all the guys that came to work for him, first thing he taught them when they came to work was you got to learn to sleep fast <laughs> because they would, uh, they'd be up late and be at the racetrack early. So, and you better not uh, let him beat you to the breakfast table or you were in trouble. 